One, two, three, go away. What's up guys, this is Caitlin from Caitlin Says, and I'm gonna do a review of yesterday's episode of Legend of Korra, which was entitled Peacekeepers. Oh my gosh, guys. Can you say Iroh? Can you see fangirling Iroh? So the episode starts off with the water tribe at war, yada yada yada, we all know that stuff. Uh, they get the stupid idea to circumvent the president telling them no to the army. Um, from that stupid businessman. Like, don't get me wrong, he's funny and all this stuff. Like, he's good. But he gets this idea to go, like, just go straight to the general, see if they'll, like, go to war without the president's knowledge. Like, so Korra goes to General Iroh, who is, I swear, one of the most attractive characters I have ever seen. Mizuko was attractive too, but. I was just like so chiseled, but he still got the same voice. So she goes to him and she's like, hey, like, will you help me start a war in secret? Like, come on, man, come on, we're buds, we're buds. Um, and he's gonna go for it, but then all of a sudden it says Mako rats her out to um, Beifong, or no, to the president. The president shows up and he's all like, you know, pretty much, I know what you're doing, you're not going behind my back, or it'll be like, your, not, well, not your life, but. It'll be your job. There we go. Uh, so that's a fail because his hands are tied. But oh my gosh, I'm so glad they showed him just because I've been wanting to see him for so long. But since, you know, Mako rats her out, they end up breaking up. And in a way, it's a good thing. In a way, it's not. Uh, for me, I liked Makora. Like, I shipped them so hard in the first season. Like, they just seem so much to be together. But I feel like Korra is like changing into this person that's not good for Mako. Like, he's got a level head. Like, he's mature. Korra, she just goes on and barges and busts down doors and, like, threatens judges. All this. She's so... I don't I want to use the word crazy, but, like, I know there's a method to her, her madness, but it's just crazy, you know? Like, she's not thinking straight. She's gonna get herself in super big trouble. Because of her rash idea to go circumvent the president's no, Mako ends up having to be honest with the president when he's asked them, you know, since you're dating the Avatar, if there's anything going on, you have an ob obligation to tell me. You know, because he's a policeman first and then a law first. You know? So he ends up telling him and writing out Korra, and Korra finds out. She's pissed. She goes to, I believe, like, the police department or whatever, and she, like, kicks down the door, like, I'm sorry, were you not taught manners? For real? She kicks down the door, barges in, kicks his desk, I'm pretty sure breaks it, too, after they break up, because they're like, you know what, we always fight when we're together, blah, 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 like, you know, you're so, you're not thinking through, I shouldn't have to always worry about that, you know? And then it's all like, you know, maybe this is too too much for a relationship, or maybe we don't have time for a relationship. I don't remember how they put it, but then she's all like, "So, what does that mean? Are you breaking up with me?" Yeah, I am. Ooh, because she's all like, "Who gonna run away?" I, I think she kicks his table after that. I don't know. I think it was before. But anyway, so there's broken door, I'm sure, and broken table. So wherever Cord goes when she's upset, there's a mass destruction. Cause guys, Beifong's back. Beifong's back. Um, Beifong comes out of the office, and she just looks like, what the? Like, what the heck happened here? I broke up with the Avatar. And her response was just hilarious. She's like, huh, you got it easy. You should have seen Air Temple Island when I broke up, or when Tenzin broke up with me. Oh my gosh, it was hilarious. Cause you know, Air Temple Island has tons of stones, so she'd probably like. <laughs> I feel kind of like, in a way, that Beifong is a calm version and level-headed version of Korra, because they're both very strong characters, both very powerful, you know. But the difference is, is Beifong has such a straight, you know point of view, she's not rash, she's very smart. Not to say Court isn't smart, but she's so rash and immature right now, it's just destroying everything in her life. You know, she, I swear, like, there is a point in the episode, kind of in the beginning, where she's leading, leading a Southern Water Tribe peaceful march um, against, like, the Northern Water Tribe. And I swear, by the way, that someone in the crowd says, get a real job! 
What? I don't know. This has nothing to do with employment issues as far as I know. So yeah, they break up. So I'm sure they'll be together at some point in the season again, but I feel like it's a good point for them because I really want to see, you know, Cora and Mako grow separately because we only got to see so much of them, you know, even in, as individuals. You know, when you're in a relationship, you're a different person. Just like when you're out of a relationship, you're a different person. Like, yeah, you can still be who you are, but you're not fully yourself because you're always thinking about that other someone. And yes, back to Bing Fong. I just want to say I'm so glad she's in this, you know, back in the series and I hope she stays for a little bit again because I feel like she just brings so much to the show. She's a beloved character just because she was Toph's daughter, you know, that alone brings like, you know, people who love Avatar to the show, you know, because Toph was awesome and I think we all want to see who her dad is, of course, like I mentioned. Um, and I'm sure they'll reveal that later on, maybe in one of the comics that is going on too. Um, I believe the next one comes out as like the Promise Part 2 or something like that. I forget what it's entitled, um, but I don't think it comes out until like November. So they're kind of exploring on that point. They're exploring like Zuko's mom. So I don't think they'll talk about, you know, about Toph too much, even though she's in it too. So maybe they'll reveal that, maybe they won't, we don't know. But I'm just really glad that she you know, brings a lot to this episode. She's such a strong character. That being said, the way the episode ends in whole is you have Unalak's son and daughter chasing Korra with their mad bending skills, you know, for water. While she's on a speeder, they're just chasing her, like doing that kind of like whoosh thing. I don't know what you call it. So they're chasing her and she goes in like to the Avatar state and she's all fighting them off and all that stuff, not really working. And the spirit pops out. And I might have been the spirit from the first episode of this season, not too sure, looks similar. Um, so I don't know if that's connected, but the spirit pretty much eats her. And then all of a sudden the episode's done. We don't know like a spirit's digestive tract, like what happens if they eat someone. I don't know, maybe they have spiritual poop? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed filming it. If you guys liked it, please comment and subscribe. Please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Don't pay attention to my 7 subscribers right now, that's just a number. I promise to bring you guys the best content just like anybody else. Alright, I will see you guys later.